And so for some unbeknownst reason to me, I pronounce his name Switzer through the whole video. It's Switzer. And I don't know why I pronounced it Switzer. Uh, so please forgive me for that. But through the whole video, it's going to say Switzer instead of Switzer. Let's talk about Carl Switzer, better known as Alfalfa and the Little Rascals. I can remember when I was growing up in the 70s watching the Little Rascals. I used to love that show. I used to watch it every morning before I went to school. Uh, it came on on our local station. And uh, then I'd watch some on Saturday as well. And uh, boy, what a great actor he was. He was so funny with his hair sticking up and, and uh, sometimes he'd be missing a front tooth. But uh, anyway, he was born August 7th, 1927. He was also a dog breeder. A lot of people don't even know that, but he, he was a dog breeder later on uh, in life. He began his career in acting in the mid thirties in the Our Gang short subject series. And he was, like I said, he was Alfalfa. That's probably what he was most remembered for. He left the series in the 1940s and he was married uh, in 1954 and uh, had a son before divorcing his wife in 1957. A lot of people don't realize that he was fatally shot in 1959, over $50, but we'll talk about it in just a moment. So in his early life, uh, he was born in Paris, Illinois. Uh, he was the youngest of four children. His oldest brother died in 1922. Uh, a sister, Janice, was born in 1923, and a brother, Harold, was born in 1925. He was of Scottish and German ancestry. And like I say, he was in the Air Gang uh, series. In 1934, he traveled to California to visit his family. While sightseeing, they went to a uh, Hal Roach Studios. And uh, following a public tour, eight-year-old Harold uh, and his six-year-old Carl entered the uh, Hal Roach Studios, opened to the public cafeteria and the uh, Air Gang Cafe and began to impromptu performance. Producers Hal Roach uh, was present and was very impressed with him, and he signed both brothers uh, to appear in Our Gang. Uh, Harold was given two nicknames, Slim and uh, Deadpan, while Carl was dubbed Alfalfa. Uh, the brothers first appeared in 1935 in the Our Gang short titled Beginner's Luck. Uh, by the end of the year, Alfalfa was one of the main characters. At this point, they moved his brother Howard to the background of the series. So he kind of moved ahead of his brother and became kind of a breakout star. Now Carl was an experienced singer and musician, but his character Alfalfa was often called upon to sing off key and uh, pitchy. And so it was done for comedic purposes. Oh, wonder, I'm in the mood for love. So he sported a cowlick stuck up on the back of his head and, and and that's what i remember him as that's that's how i remember him i i can just see it in my head uh, as a kid watching our gang and uh just seeing that uh, stick up on him it's kind of funny that he was the breakout star because by the end of 1937 uh he kind of surpassed the series nominal star which was uh george mcfarland uh which played spanky and so he kind of jumped ahead of him and became the breakout star uh, the boys got along, uh, but their fathers argued constantly over their son's screen time and salaries. Uh, so it was a constant arguing back and forth all the time, even though the two boys got along very well. Once his tenure on the uh, Our Gang ended in 1940, when he was 12, his first role was as a Boy Scout in uh, I Love You Again in 1940. He then co-starred in a 1941 comedy, and then the next year he had a supporting role in Mrs. Wiggs of the Cabbage Patch. Uh, he also continued to appear in films in various supporting roles, um, including Johnny uh, Doughboy in 1942, uh, Going My Way in 1944, and The Great Mike in 1944. He has an uncredited role as Augie in the 1943 film The Human Comedy, his last starring roles were uh, in a brief series, uh, Bowery Boy movies, and uh, so that's, that's what he last starred in. Um, he reprised his alfalfa character, uh, complete with comedically uh, sour vocals, in uh, PRC's Gas House Kids comedies in 1946 and 1947. By this time, he was downplaying his earlier Our Gang work. He had small parts in both uh, the 1946 Christmas film, uh, It's a Wonderful Life, 
and also in, again in 1948 in uh, On Our Merry Way as the mayor's son. In 1952, he played a busboy in the film Pat and Mike and in 1954, a musical film, White Christmas. His photo was also used to depict freckle-faced Haynes, the dog-faced boy. By the 1950s, uh, he turned to television. Between 1952 and 1955, uh, he made six appearances on the Roy Rogers Show. He also guest starred in an episode of the American science fiction series, Science Fiction Theater, and the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show. In 1953 and 1954, he co-starred in three films, Island of the Sky, The uh, High and the Mighty, and Track of the Cat. In 1956, he co-starred in Dig That Uranium, uh, followed by a bit part as a Hebrew slave in The Ten Commandments. Ironically enough, The Ten Commandments was the final role he would ever play in his life. Besides acting, he was also a trained hunting dog trainer. And that, ironically, is how he died, is, is, is over a dog. He had agreed to train a uh, hunting dog for Moses Samuel Stilts, known as Bud, a longtime uh, friend and sometimes business partner whom he had met while working with uh, Roy Rogers. While in his possession, the dog ran off. Uh, it went after a bear, and Stilts was unsympathetic towards Switzer, and Stilts demanded that he either return the dog or pay him the equivalent value of the dog. Uh, unable to produce the cash to settle the debt, uh, Switzer took out ads in newspapers and put up flyers, offering a reward for the safe return of the animal. And eventually, uh, it was located and brought to the bar where Switzer uh, was working at the time. So basically, he gave the rescuer a reward, the reward money. Some say he gave him $35 in cash and $15 in alcoholic beverages from the bar he was working at. Others say he gave him... $15 cash and $35 in alcoholic beverages. So it's kind of up in the air which way it actually happened. But one way or another, he didn't get the whole $50. Now this $50 loss didn't sit well with Switzer. Uh, so basically he went back to Stilts and told him he should reimburse him the finder's fee. Well, Stilts didn't, didn't agree with that. He didn't think that, that he should actually have to give him the $50 back. So he went to Stilts' home in Mission Hills and basically demanded money from Stilts. Even though there's different accounts of what happened, pretty much everyone agrees that Stilts was struck over the head with a clock by Switzer. At that point, Stilts retreated to his room to retrieve a 38 caliber revolver. At this point, Switzer started wrestling Stilts for the gun, trying to take it away from him. And it caused the gun to discharge and almost shot Tom Corrigan, Stilts' 14-year-old stepson. Stilts' account of the event was one of self-defense, uh, testifying that Switzer had uh, banged on his front door yelling, let me in or I'll kick in the door. Uh, the threat was followed by a struggle that began with one of the men. Uh, Switzer striking Stilts with the clock, prompting him to retrieve his firearm, and Switzer grabbed for it, and the gun discharged uh, accidentally. Now, according to Stilts, he threatened him with a knife and yelled, I'm going to kill you. Stilts fired a shot towards Switzer, hitting him in the groin, which hit an artery, causing massive internal bleeding. And Switzer uh, was dead when he arrived at the hospital. That's kind of the account that Stilts gave. Now, Tom Carradine's account differed slightly from his stepfather's. Uh, he told investigators that Stilts, was shot, that Stilts shot Switzer as he was leaving. After the accidental discharge, Switzer, according to Kerrigan, uh, had a moment of clarity about the situation and turned to Switzer and told him he needed to leave. The two were uh, headed for the door when Stilts then fired the fatal shot. And he says that Switzer never drew a knife, which is what Stilts had claimed. And it was ruled self-defense and Stilts got off. So it's kind of a shame that he died over $50. So Carl Switzer uh, was interred in the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood, California. Oh, one interesting fact here, there is a picture of a dog on his uh, tombstone. A lot of people thought that was the Petey dog, that that was on there because of Petey, but it wasn't. Somebody actually drew a circle around the eye of the dog that's, that's uh, engraved on the tombstone. But it wasn't Petey, it was actually put there because of his ability to... Uh, train hunting dogs. That's why it was actually there. So that's kind of a bit of information for you there. So anyway, I loved Alfalfa. I loved the show, uh, Our Gang. 
I hate that, uh, you know, he had to die over $50 uh, and a dog. So rest in peace, Carl. You will be missed. <laughs>